Our journey in acid-base chemistry continues with buffers and the Henderson-Hasselbach equation. And so there's our learning outcomes slash expectations. Feel free to pause and read through those. All right, section 14.6, we're going to start talking about buffers. And it turns out buffers are really important in biology and biochemistry, uh, and so it's worth dedicating an entire section to it. And so a buffer solution, uh, you can see the formal definition, provides a means of minimizing the change in pH of a solution. That is, even after the addition of strong acid or base, there is minimal change in pH. And so what a buffer solution is, is you basically take a weak acid of some kind, we'll call it HA, and its conjugate base, and you put them together in solution. And so something that's important about a buffer, and this will be true for any weak acid in solution, is you need both HA and A- to be present. And that's basically a requirement for it to resist changes in adding acid or removing acid or changing the pH lower or higher. You need both of those guys present for it to behave as a buffer. And so the way these buffers work is basically you have a solution and you're gonna add a strong acid or a strong base to it. And that strong acid or strong base is gonna to try to change the pH of the solution. But what the buffer does is basically, it ties up that strong acid or those protons and that OH minus in the form of this weak acid conjugate base pair. And so what do I mean by that? And so if we take a solution without buffer, we just take pure H2O and we add say HCl to it. We saw the math earlier that HCl is a very strong acid. It has a Ka that's like hundreds of thousands and it favors products a lot. And so effectively, whatever concentration of HCl you add, that's the concentration of H plus in the solution. Similarly, you add NaOH, your concentration of NaOH is equal to your concentration of OH minus. And so any H plus or OH minus you add, it goes directly to changing the pH of the solution. And so 0.1 molar HCl gives you a pH one solution. Now, if you have a buffer solution, it, it basically interferes with that dissociation problem. Well, not interferes with dissociation, but it ties up the H plus that's generated. And so you can imagine a buffer solution as being a combination of HAs and A minuses floating around. And so if you add HCl to the solution, what ends up happening? HCl delivers an H+, plus, but because of the composition of this solution, it doesn't just float around as H+, plus or generate H3O. Instead, the A- minus that was present here effectively ties up some of that H+, plus that was delivered. And so here's the equation, A- minus plus H+, plus giving you this HA. And so what it's doing is we had a 50-50 mixture here of A- minus and HA. All HCl is doing is effectively making more HA and less A-. minus, And so it ties up some of it. And so what effectively happens is you're no longer delivering H plus like you did in the solution, but instead you're using HCl, adding that to the solution. It turns that H plus into an AH, which is a much weaker acid in this case. And similarly, if you add OH minus, you're not just delivering OH minus to the solution, that OH minus, minus gets tied up by an HA. And so while we had a 50 50 mixture of HA and A minus, HA plus OH gives you A minus and H2O. And so rather than OH minus floating around, it's A minus, which is a weaker base. And so Effectively, what you're doing is you're tying up the strong acid protons and the uh, the basic OHs by converting some HA into A minus and some A minus into HA. And so it's rather than just delivering H plus and OH minus, you're just changing the ratios of those species. And so here's another depiction of that, but with a real example, in this case, talking about HF and F minus. And so if you have a buffer made of HF and F minus, you have a, let's say you have a 50-50 mixture of those two. If you add H plus, you convert some of it to HF and F minus minus, but you don't just have H plus floating around in solution. You're just converting it basically into a weak acid rather than a strong acid. Likewise, if you add OH minus, you're converting some of the HF into F minus and you're changing the ratio. And so down here is just a uh, molecular um, depiction of that. But you'll notice there's no OH minus or H plus floating around because it all gets tied up with this HF and F minus. And so that's what a buffer solution does. It doesn't let you deliver H plus and OH minus directly to solution. Instead, it buffers that it, it effectively changes the ratio of in this case HF and F minus um, and changes the proportionality. And so what does this look like in terms of pH outcomes? And so we can compare those solutions. We talked about pure water, and then we're gonna talk about a buffer solution, in this case, a um, uh, acetic acid to sodium acetate buffer. 
And so if you look at a pure water solution, as soon as you add a strong acid of any kind, we'll say moles of HCl in this uh, x-axis here, and we're monitoring pH on the y-axis. And so you start out at some solution of water is going to be a neutral solution at pH of 7. As soon as you add HCl, it is going to sharply decline that pH, and it's eventually going to approach pH of 1 as you eat uh, 0.01 molar. That's 0 0.1 negative log of that is pH 1. That's exactly what you'd expect. And so adding HCl to pure water, you can see a dramatic pH change. But if you do the same thing with a 1 molar uh, sodium acetate acetic acid uh, buffer solution where you have a weak acid and a weak conjugate base, here's what happens to the pH. It basically says that, sure, you're adding HCl, it's a strong acid, it's delivering H plus to that solution, but you can see there's very little change in pH. It is dropping a little bit. It's effectively converting a bunch of this, uh, uh, this uh, sodium acetate into acetic acid, but it's not changing the pH dramatically. And that's exactly what a buffer does. It buffers against changes in pH. And so again, in the, the water solution, you add HCl, you're just delivering H plus, generating H3O plus. That's what you see here. In in the buffer solution, that H plus is getting tied up by this uh, acetate ion, this, this conjugate base of the acetic acid, and it's generating acetic acid. And so rather than just adding H plus, you're making this weak acid that for the most part doesn't deliver protons nearly as strong. Mostly it stays as this form right here rather than an H plus floating around in solution. But we have a, question, a couple questions, you know, what is the pH of the buffer? How does the pH change with the addition of H plus and OH minus? How good is the buffer? Um, we can't just mix and match things together randomly. We have to target what we want the solution to stay at a given pH. We, we have to target the design of the buffer solution to get the, the conditions that we want. And so for that, the go-to is the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. And so it, it's basically a, a nice mathematical relationship that tells us be, the relationship between pKa's H plus plus uh, a h a a minus um, and the ph of the solution and so if we think about a we have a acid conjugate base pairing right so h a is the acid a minus is the conjugate base you can see it over here h a is going to dissociate into h plus or h 3 o plus and a minus now we can draw the ka equation h plus times a minus gives over h a Something we can do with this equation is rearrange it so H plus is on the left side. We can take the negative log of both sides, the negative log, um, and we can separate these two variables, so again, using log rules. Um, when we do the negative log, we can actually convert a negative log to a positive log just by inversing the uh, numerator and denominator, and that's what we did in this step. And then we can look at this and we can say, okay, negative log of H plus, that's the pH. Negative log of Ka is pKa. So we can substitute those into this equation and it's something that looks like this. pH is equal to pKa plus the log of A minus over HA. And so that's the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. There's a few assumptions go into this. Um, basically, you can do ice table math and figure out the relationship between pKa and pH of the solution based on the concentration of your starting point. Or if, you're, if your Ka value is, is, is small, it basically says that x value in the ice table is negligible and your math effectively simplifies to this. And so all this is, is basically a truncated version of that ice table. If you have a weak acid and a weak conjugate base, x is negligible, your math checks out to be this. And so you end up with the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation and it effectively says pH is equal to pKa plus the log of conjugate base over the acid. And so, yeah, there it is. And it turns out this is a really useful and powerful uh, um, equation. It really helps with buffer solutions in particular, because if you know the pK of your acid and the concentration of HA and A minus, you can calculate the pH. And that's the pH that it's going to stay at roughly when you add acid or base to it. Or you can target a particular pH. So if you want to design a system for a certain pH, like a, you know, mimic the liver, the condition pH conditions of liver, you can design that by knowing the pKa and controlling the ratio between them. And so you can also do the math to determine how a strong acid or base changes that because it's going to change this ratio, which effectively changes this number. Um, and so it's really important in, in relation to things like buffer capacity and buffer range. And so what buffer capacity is, is basically how good is it at being a buffer, right? And so we showed this graph earlier where we said, okay, this buffer solution at HCl, at HCl, the the pH stays roughly the same. Eventually, if we add enough HCl, it's going to chew up all the base and the H plus is going to win, right? And so the pH will eventually approach one and it'll keep going lower and lower. 
But what buffer capacity describes is like, how long can it maintain that buffer? How long can it resist that change to pH? And so in terminology, the higher the buffer capacity, the more resistant it is to that change, the more it's going to maintain this, uh, this horizontal line for a larger concentration. And so that's buffer capacity. And so if you want to design a system with the highest possible buffer capacity, there's just a few guidelines associated with it. One is larger concentrations of AH and A-. And so that should make sense going back to that cartoon, right, where you have HA and A- floating around. If you add H+, it converts A- into HA. And so the more A- you have, the more H+, you can add before it starts becoming a problem. Because as soon as that H+, outnumbers A-, you get this here. But as long as A- outnumbers H+, you're here. And so the greater A-, minus, likewise the greater of HA, that gives you a higher buffer capacity. It's more resistive towards change. Uh, the other thing is when HA equals A- minus and pH equals pKa, so if we look at this equation right here, if HA equals A-, minus, if these are 1, effectively this is 0, so pH equals pKa, that is your best buffering condition. It basically says you have equal amounts of this, equal amounts of this. Add acid, it's, it's going to respond. Add base, it's going to respond. It's going to be resistive towards do both directions if the concentrations of those are equal. And so your goal for making a buffer that's effective, you want to find a Ka value where the one-to-one -one ratio of these is, is where you want it to be. And you want to add as much of this as you can and still be reasonably safe under those conditions. And so buffer capacity, how good is that resisting? You you maximize that with the large concentrations and the concentrations of those being equal. The other thing we talk about sometimes is something called buffer range. It basically says what pH range is it going to be good at, and a buffer is most effective when pH equals pK. That's just because this is a one-to-one -one ratio and that pH equals pK. But you're still comfortable plus or minus a, a pH range of one. And so whatever the pKa of your acid is, you can basically make a buffer that will be stable plus or minus one. But once it gets beyond those, it's going to start doing this. It's basically going to say H plus wins or OH minus wins, and your buffer is no longer effective. And so buffer capacity is how long it maintains within that range. And buffer range is, is the plus or minus where it starts to fall apart, where it's no longer effective as a buffer and it loses to H plus and OH minus. Minus. And so in terms of preparing a buffer, there's a lot of different buffer solutions. And so you can take basically any weak acid in the conjugate base, you put those together in solution, that is a buffer. And so based on a range of Ka's or what pKa value or pH range you want to stabilize at, you choose different conjugate acid base pairs. And so stepwise, you basically say, okay, what's my target pH? I want to find a an acid with a pKa that's close to that target pH, and I'm going to mix that conjugate acid-base pair together. And so you can mix salt, acid, and salt in an appropriate ratio, or you can add just acid and add add a, like OH to it to balance out the concentrations, or add just the the conjugate base and add H plus until you max out those um, adjust those ratios to being one to one. And so yeah, you you have a target pH, you know the pKa's, or find a list of pKa's, and you can pick whichever acid combination you want for your particular um, buffer goals. All right, so there's the summary. We have a buffer solution. It basically, it, it tries to oppose changes in pH. And this is really important in biological systems where you want to maintain a homeostatic condition. And so you take a conjugate acid and or an acid and a conjugate base, you put those together in solution and it's a buffer solution. And the Henderson-Hasselbalch gives us a really convenient way of relating, you know, pKa, HA, A minus, and pH of a solution. And we can figure out the relationship between those. We also talked about buffer capacity and buffer range, uh, buffer capacity is how good is it at resisting change? How much does it stay a straight line on that graph? And buffer range is basically, you know, how safe it is, plus or minus one pH unit above and below the pKa of the acid. And so, yeah, buffers are really important in biology, and this, this gives you an idea as to why that happens and what kind of tools you can use to both generate buffers and understand how H plus and OH minus will impact a buffer. So yeah, that closes out 14.6, which is buffers. Um, we're going to close out all of chapter 14 with acid-based titrations next. <laughs>